Hi, I'm Jason Bradbury. I'm a product reviewer. And I'm here in Australia as part of a year-long tour of the world with my family, which I'm also vlogging. Every time I upload a video, I get asked on social media, on Twitter, Instagram, and of course on YouTube, how I approach the edit. So it occurred to me, it might be a good idea to put together five tips to get the best out of Premiere Pro. Oh, and the good stuff. The visual effects is at the end, so hang in there. So let's start off by looking at my default template and my workspace setup. They're separate things, but they combine to form a simple, ready to edit environment. Both viewing screens are set up here to maximize space. My library preview and my timeline screen. The workspace organizes all of your content into a space that's personal to you and one that enables you to get to work quickly, get to all of your commands with minimal fuss, all of your content, your hotkeys, etc., quickly and efficiently every time you edit. Here is my library. I can access it full screen using what some people call the back quote key. It's above the tab key on my keyboard um, and it means that whichever window I'm hovering over, I can open it full screen, be it the timeline, the timeline preview window, my library preview, or the library itself. So this is a good workspace, especially because of the size of those two large viewing windows and a large amount of screen estate for the timeline and enough library to get a view of the content. Whereas this is a bad workspace. Some of Premiere's own default workspaces are cluttered like this. This one though is the result of an intensive edit of my own that left it untidy. Right hand side is the color effects panel, useful for some projects, but not often necessary and certainly not part of a startup default template. So let's clean it up. Next, I'll reduce the height of the timeline and make it wider. These tools, by the way, can be accessed by hotkeys. The cutting tool is a C, the selection tool is a V and so on. So you can, if you really want to maximize space, get rid of this tool window too. I can give these viewing windows more space. And if you really want as much room as possible for the timeline, you can move uh, or even temporarily undock and hide the sound level display if you want. Some of you won't like this, but there are numerous ways of monitoring audio after the main edit and adjusting before you export. Now I'm back with my default template. The alternative to loading up a clean space like this with preloaded assets that you often use, a wide, easy to see timeline, is that you start with your previous project and have to delete tons of content before you can get things started. And that's a start that's not conducive to a good, clean, quick workflow. And of course, it's easy to mess all this up in the course of a day's edit. So keep several copies of both your default template and favorite workspace layouts. There are literally hundreds of time-saving tricks you can employ. Here are just a few that I find really useful. I'll just put some footage on the timeline. I shot this in Oahu in Hawaii. I'll add some more so it's all stacked up. Now imagine this is a project. Using hotkey C, you can cut into a single clip. But what if you wanna slice right down the center of all the tracks, perhaps to make room for a new clip? The time-saving tip you need to know is Shift C which enables you to cut from top to bottom in one click. I hit V for the selection tool and I can now move all of that content to the right. But what if you have a much bigger project and you wanna move all the clips to the right out of the way to insert a new clip? Here's a previous vlog. It's number six from my family's year away, our visit to Venice. Having to manually select all the content I want to move is a big time consuming pain. Let's try again. I'll cut here. And now I can move the whole project to the right of the cut with just one hotkey. A for the track select forward tool. It's now easy to insert a clip here where I made the cut. I should just point out I for in point and O for out point. Two more time savers for setting up a clip before you insert it. I drag the clip from the library preview window to the newly created space, or I can drag just the video 
or just the sound using these icons. I finish by moving the rest of my clips back again using the A key. So that's hotkeys, V for select, C for razor tool, shift plus C for cutting multiple clips, and A to select and move everything to the right of the playhead. By the way, shift A to do that to the left. Oh, and remember I and O, in and out. Super efficient keys to select what you want to use from a library preview clip. I think Premiere's own default fonts can look really strong and that you don't have to buy other fonts from third-party typography sites. Here are what I consider to be a few bold, contemporary, stylish Premiere fonts and some techniques to make them look their best. Franklin Gothic Demi Condensed. I'll change that now to read Miami as that's where I shot this slow-mo footage. A tip I think is worth knowing is how effective all of these fonts can be when they fill the screen. Impact is another great font, fantastic with its blend mode set to overlay in the effect controls tab. And my third recommendation is Heitensweiler. I'm not sure if I've pronounced that correctly, but you get the idea. It's very business-like, but modern. Good for documentaries. I should say a few words about where I get my music and sound effects from. YouTube Audio, as you're probably aware, offers free music and sound effects that you can use. It's a great service and I use it, but I also pay for an account on epidemicsound.com because for the kind of music I use, hip hop, ambient tracks, dance music, I think it's better. And it has a great range of audio effects. The cost is $15 a month or around £10 a month in the UK, as long as you have less than 500,000 views a month. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, I just like their service, details of which are in the description. You might think that the only way to edit audio levels between tracks is with time-consuming keyframes like I've done here with these voiceover and music tracks. But there is a much simpler, far quicker and often very effective method for adjusting the volume of your layered tracks. Simply cut and adjust using audio gain. Okay, I've got a relatively poor quality voice over here. In city camp where we parked our camper is at the epicenter of some of the city's best street art. I recorded it in a hurry on my camera for vlog 12, which is about graffiti. I'll use it over the Miami footage from earlier and show ways you can adjust layers of audio. Here it is without adjustment. City camp where we parked our camper is at the epicenter of some of the cities. You can't hear my voice very clearly at all. My super simple suggestion, especially good when your back's against the wall and you're trying to get an edit finished, is to use the audio gain function. Right click, minus 20 dB. Obviously, that figures up to you. The Dockland City camp where we parked our camper. Then do the opposite after the voiceover. Again with just a cut, no blending, plus 20 dB. I'll just tidy that up. Move the cut points onto the beat and jump cut the visuals. And that's a quick, easy sound edit. Dockland City Camp, where we parked our camper, is at the epicenter of some of the city's best street art. I've shown you a super simple sound edit, I'm now going to do the same with a visual effect. It's a jump cut that produces a really cool ghosting effect. It works great with slow-mo, but it will work with real-time content. You need to shoot with a static camera, with and without your subject in shot. 
like this footage from Tarifa in Spain for my Slick Revolution skateboard review. Find a point at which your subject is not in frame. Cut, then move on in the timeline until they are clearly in shot. And again, cut. Adjust the clips and you'll see your subject appear like a ghost. You now need to copy your original clip with no subject in view and paste it on the end. Again, this is a quick and easy trick, but I think it looks great. My second simple effect is a speed ramp. Now this effect does work best with slow-mo footage like this that I shot at the skate park on Venice Beach in LA. With so many smartphones, action cameras, compacts, DSLRs, etc. now offering high quality slow-mo, I think good slow motion is very much within the reach of all of us. So let's speed ramp this skater. Simply find a point well into the footage where you might want to speed up to, like here where he's balanced on the edge. Cut. Then speed up the new clip by right clicking and increasing to say 1500%. And that's your speed ramp right there. It's that simple. I'm going to switch clips now. I shot this at Kennedy Space Center when our year away took us to Florida. I'm gonna use it to show you a super simple way to give your clips some visual character by layering them with other clips. The example here is gonna be with some scratchy film footage, but you can layer any clip on top of another and play around with it using the same technique. For your info, I bought this scratchy film clip from shutterstock.com. Again, no affiliation, a link is in the description. But there's loads of ways to get this kind of effects content for free. Okay, with the top clip selected, you go to the effects controls tab in the preview window, top left of screen. And you're looking for one simple dial, the opacity percentage. There's no correct percentage, just try them out. I've started with 5% here. Immediately you see the space module appearing through the scratchy footage. I'm going for a vintage film effect, so I'll chop the clip up to make it look a bit more glitchy, like it's caught in the gate of the projector. In fact, I'll add a third layer, some film reel, again from Shutterstock, and again using the effects control. This time, I'll do a super simple kind of mask effect by changing the clip's blend mode to darken. I think that works really well with the dusty old glitchy footage underneath. And the same technique, but with different source material, can be used to produce a completely different aesthetic in just minutes, turning odd bits of footage like this Kennedy Space Center mission control clip I shot into something visually interesting. I'm now using the same technique behind this transition. It's a little more finessed with keyframes to blend the voice track and the addition of an ambient music track. I'm using old film footage layered over the cut from arriving at the beach in Oahu, Hawaii to seeing the wave closer up. I zoom into the old film clip so it fills the frame and I add a dissolve between the two beach clips called dip to white. But in essence, it's the same technique of layering and blending as the previous two examples. It's just used as a transition here rather than a visual effect. And that's it. I hope these examples help you speed up and get more out of your edits. Let me know your thoughts, your own tips, and of course your questions. Oh, and please like and subscribe. Wow.